highly recommend the North Coast 500. It just full MOT on it. Um, we're not too sure how. Welcome back to the channel. It's a glorious day of the day. In fact, probably don't need this hoodie on. I'm at Kirkbride. This is the airfield in behind us. JDM's garage is there and the airfield's just in behind us. I might even get the drone out, see what's going on, but can you see? Hang on, let's spin you around. Maybe get cubes to zoom in on that one, but you've got an orange McLaren, you've got a yellow Camaro, I think. There's a few other cars there. There's, uh, it's a bit hard to see because it's a bit of a distance, but uh, basically they do like supercar days and car experiences. I don't know whether it's supercar world that, that normally do it, because we don't normally see the cars on the airfield here. They tend to operate it from the far end of the airfield. This is like halfway up. So yeah, not too sure who's uh, organized what. To be honest with you, I never see anything like advertising wise for that sort of stuff. So anyway, I've just got back from doing the, the NC500. For anybody who doesn't know, North Coast 500. So basically you drive around the whole North Coast of, of Scotland, um, right the way around to East, there's an electric cars, just drove around the little oval circuit. We've got a little oval circuit, you know. Look at that, it's not exactly oval, it's definitely little. I'd say that was someone looking for the supercar thing. So, anyway, I'm from Carlisle, so the NC500 starts in Inverness, which is about 300 miles away from Carlisle, and it goes all the way around the north coast of Scotland, back down the, the west coast. I continued on coming and, and back to Inverness, but I just continued on coming down the, the, the west coast on the way back to Carlisle. So it's been quite an epic journey to say the least. Beautiful, beautiful. If, if anybody, you know, in, in the UK fancies a road trip, in fact, there was loads of cars from all over the world. I've seen all sorts of registration plates. So it's clear that a lot of people, people do it. We hired a motorhome and uh, done it in that. Um, Went round it quite quick, we could have stopped off at a lot more places, but apparently I was enjoying the driving too much, to be honest with you. Absolutely brilliant, the roads are mental up there, especially coming down the west coast of Scotland, you've never seen anything like it. The landscapes, the, not just the landscape, but the texture of the landscape, like, you, you th there was all these different areas where, like, it was very, very different. The landscape was similar, like really high, steep mountains and, you know, sea views, lakes, well, locks, all over the place. But the texture of it changed, like the, 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 the foliage of the trees, the rocks and stuff like that. So, but um, the road, single file road with um, passing places for probably three to 400 miles of it. Um, mental how much uh, of the road is barely a road but the surface was quite good i wouldn't say it was particularly bad for potholes or anything there's more potholes in carlisle than, the, than, the, than there was on that entire trip round there it's it's a tiny thin road it works quite well the passing places work quite well as well you, you know like if if someone's in behind you you just pull over in a passing place and they go past you you can actually overtake better on that road than you can on a normal road. Obviously, I was in a motorhome, so I wasn't doing much overtaking, but, you know, it works well that way as well as pulling in for letting people pass the other way. So that was fine, and the, the, the surface was, was fine. So I'd love to do it in a car, but um, there's no or very little facilities out there, um, you know, when you need to stop and that. <laughs> Loads of amazing things to see, though, so highly recommend the north coast 500 i'm definitely going to do it again but probably not with megan because she didn't really enjoy it i'd love to do it in a car with a bunch of my pals that'd be that would be a right scream a few of you go up and that seen a load of car clubs that had obviously got together and uh, there was there was a mercedes i think the sl 500s there was a, a bunch of them 
There was a group of people in uh, Volvo Estates, like all done sort of Safari type, you know, like endurance sort of things. So I don't know where the plates were from. But yeah, the people have been uh, obviously traveling from all over the place to do this road, and I can see why now. But for me, I just enjoyed the, the driving. Like some of it was, I says to Megan, I, I says, I'm, I'm in third gear all the time here. I'm barely ever getting into to fourth. And then like about 100, 150 miles later, I'm now on a bit that I'm in second gear all the time and barely getting into third. That's how windy and, you know, the, the undulations, it's up, it's down, it's blind summits, it's mountain passes, it's, uh, yeah, it's just absolutely, and, and the scenery, we've seen whales, killer whales, we've seen uh, eagles, we've seen stags in people's front gardens, um, we've seen, anyway, we've seen all sorts, uh, it's brilliant. But uh, yeah, if anybody's looking for a good road trip to do, highly recommend it. So I'm going to go in the garage and uh, show you where we're at there. I'm just sort of getting back into gear from having my head out of gear. Uh, at the minute, videos that I'm posting are about two to three weeks. You know, about, about two weeks. Now about three weeks done. So I'm three weeks in the future at the minute, but yeah, let's go and have a look inside the garage. Something to show you before I go in the garage as well. So, was it the day before Jonathan, before you crashed your car? I don't know. I think it was the day before Jonathan crashed his car. He's very embarrassed about it. Obviously there's implications of his driving ability. So, um, and he's, he's touchy about stuff like that. <laughs> he doesn't drive both. So yeah. As it would happen, I think it was the day before he bought his car, uh, crashed his car. I bought him that because I'd been saying that I was going to get him a car and build him an RB200, or rather we'll, you know, it's, we'll build it together. For just for everything that he's done to help us, you know. And uh, this thing came up on, spin you around, this thing came up on Facebook. Friend sends us the link. It's just full MOT on it. Um, we're not too sure how. Uh, there's things wrong with the brakes. The headlights are a bit, a bit shonky, a bit, a bit yellow. But yeah, it's all right. Just need, needs a little, needs a little bit of Jonathan's love. But yeah, we're going to use this car to build the, the to, to, to do the demo video really. So. We'll, we'll we'll be doing a video we'll make a full kit and then we'll strip this car down on video so that we can show you where all the bolts are what you need to take off uh, and also give you a timing of things to give you an idea of how long things are going to take um, so we'll strip this down we can't do it with the other car because it doesn't make sense because the car's already stripped and you know we've done things that you wouldn't be doing with the kit so just want a straightforward start to finish video which would essentially be the tutorial video on how to build one of these things and uh i've got a bit of a bit of rally car action going on here stinks of petrol so yeah i've been here for quite a while and not really done anything at it well i haven't done anything but um, i'm gonna get started on taking these edges off which doesn't look like too much of a job you know it's, it's a bunch of work in it but that that bit there's a bit, a bit of resin had seeped through maybe you have to build up with a bit of gel coat on this corner as well I think there's a little bit too much plasticine in the corner see how this corner's a bit sharper so maybe just Build that up with gel coat. But yeah, I just got all these edges to sort out. So having that other MR2 means that we can do uh, strip it down and then do a full build video from well, probably from start to finish. It's certainly, it's certainly going to be from the start to the point where the kit's bolted to the car and and on. You're still gonna maybe have stuff to do like 
there'll be additional stuff which will be separate videos like like how to fit the the catch for the rear clam um, <clears throat> doing lifters on the back we still haven't worked that one out your bonnet bonnet catches you know stuff like that headlights but from start to finish you know with a with a, a fresh car and a full like fitting of the kit onto the car i mean because people are maybe going to do different headlights and then we're going to do different meshes the you know the they might put lifters on the front or they might you know just have a you know or, or even the back they might still just have a broom handle i don't know what people want to do i wouldn't be doing it with a broom handle anyway but yeah so that'll give us the completed video so what what good time in there just just like um i mean jonathan didn't need to crash his car how are you doing it just worked out all right because that's got a full mrc on it so now he's uh buzzing backwards and forwards to work in that and if i hadn't got that it'd have been It'd have been a bit stuck, so, so hopefully he doesn't crash this one. Right, so you can see these seams here. I've just been sanding at a couple on this back edge there. Can you see? So we only put one coat of gel coat on this. We definitely should have done two. That's the fiberglass showing on the as I'm as I'm sanding this this edge. It's small, but. This edge here has been done. This edge here has been done, and yeah, that, that that that'll be perfect. That there's no fiberglass poking through, but in some places, looks like there's gonna be. It's all right though. It's all sortable. So, just got 180 on the block and knocking the top of it off, and then going to 400, and then after that, provided it's not got fiberglass showing through it, then technically we could just polish it in this case though i'm almost certain this clam's getting painted well it is it's definitely getting painted so really i don't need to worry about going through so it doesn't take long at all to to knock it off tiny little speck of resin there so the resin coming through there this problem will be sorted by putting two coats of gel coat on though so we know what we need to do to fix it. Get some of there as well. Let's investigate. What is that? I don't know you can see it, but it's like a. You see where I'm at there? Yeah. We'll get stuck into that in a minute. So we're going to find these as well. And everyone that I find needs repaired. So I'm gonna be constantly on the lookout for those. You, you can you can hear it like. I mean that's when you know these edges that lifted up. That's what it's gonna do. It's gonna create a if, if we didn't fill the void in behind it, then it'll create essentially like a bubble on this on, on on this side a hole in behind it and it's got no support so it's it's weak and again that's something that we'll be working to to avoid from the start that's you know so that we don't have that problem but at this stage this is the first one obviously so we'll learn a lot from this a couple of low bits in this bit here beside the high bits which means there's a high bit on the mold I did spot it I knew that knew that there was going to be something going on there it's a mold repair still needs a little bit more work in here I've got a dip here looking back as well obviously this was the section where we had a lot of the mold damage so this was all rebuilt, so I'm really happy with the way this is looking. Considering uh, what it's been through, I don't know what that dip is there. I think it's like, looks like it's in the gel coat. I don't think it's in the mould, but another reason why not to mess on with the plasticine as much, because that could have been a little bit of plasticine that fell out of somewhere, because 
It definitely was that problems, but I don't know. I don't know what that is. I could have a look at the mould and see if it's in the mould. We've got a couple of little speckles here and there as well. I guess that must be in the mould. Any high spots on this must be really. I mean, literally all we need to sort this out is like two coats of gel coat, possibly even blasting a third on just in, you know, the cresty sort of areas maybe, but that's, that's an easy fix as far as that not happening in, in the future. So, you know, at one point I was like, I don't think we can get a gel coat finish, you know what I mean? We're not like, we're not Ultima, you know, we're not, you know, some pro fiberglasses or whatever, but um, we're close, we're really close. Oh, that really didn't take long. If we didn't have little spots there, obviously the whole thing's getting painted, but tiny little bit where it's come, gel, uh, the fiberglass has come through there, a little bit there, Ooh. there, there, and there. But other than that, that edge is off. Doesn't take much rubbing at all. So you would then 400 that, and then go through your wet and dry stages. and then polish it. So we're close to being able to, to do that anyway. And you can sort of see the timing of how long it takes to, to do something. What was that, half an hour or something? 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And I've knocked off, oh, I'll zoom you back out. I've done the top edge of there and I've done down, down there. We're not finished at the bottom, but yeah, comes off good. sanding but I thought I'd come and show you this if I can film it I'm probably not going to be able to but there's some RC jets out wow I don't even know if that's in shot I can't actually see it on the on my little screen on the where is he at where is he at right, it's going to come across this way he must be in there somewhere there he is Probably just pointing the camera for no reason because I can't see it. Like it's too small and moving too fast. But we're getting a right air display here. 